Well, hello there, New Life Fellowship. I am recording our service from yesterday. Yesterday we had some technical difficulties, uh, and so we weren't able to audio or video record. We are still trying to figure out what happened there, and hopefully we won't have that problem again in the future. But I wanted to share with you um, the message that we had yesterday, minus the music. But before that, I want to give you just a couple of announcements of what's going on on at church and what what's taking place first of all uh, life groups are going to be starting again here in september and we're doing two uh, well actually just one life group is called love does and it's by bob goff and and following that love does a life group we're doing another bob goff one called everybody always this is a fantastic um, series that we're going to go through we're going to have life groups here at the church we're also going to have uh, groups in people's homes and uh, one online and so this coming Sunday, we're going to encourage you to sign up for the life groups of where you want to get involved in. And it's so, so, so important to be connected. Now more than ever is to be connected, to be seen uh, by others and to build relationships. And I know we still have that social distancing going on and, and we want to respect that and honor that. But it's so important that we get in back into the habit of being connected with one another. And life groups is uh, part of that. Now, the other announcement I want to share with you is uh, Labor, Labor Day weekend is uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks. We are canceling our Sunday service, but we're actually moving that to our uh, Friday night service. And so um, on Friday night, we have a special service planned outside. We're doing it outside, guys. <coughs> Let me back that up. Now, the other announcement I want to share with you is uh, oh, Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend is coming up here in a couple of weeks, and uh, we are moving our Sunday service to a Friday night service, and it's going to be an outdoor service. And it I'm super excited about this. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to do it outside. We're going to have the music message, the special um, musical stuff going on, it's, and then followed by some ice cream. Now, my boys work at an ice cream place called Casper's. You may have heard of it. Um, and we, we are ordering some of their fat boy ice creams and we're going to give it to everybody. And it's going to be awesome. And so it's going to be great on Friday night uh, a, a service on Labor Day weekend. Sunday service is going to be canceled because we're moving it to Friday night. So those are the two things that are taking place at church. Life groups coming up and then the Friday night special service. And so uh, we're excited about that. I want to get into God's word today. And, and just uh, talk about the weight and wonder of worship. We're going to be in Psalm 95, but we're also going to be in Exodus. And um, wonder, one of the things I, I want to share with you is just how awesome it is to worship God. And I think sometimes we, we miss that. We, we forget the weight and the wonder of what it means to worship God. That we could come into, I'm in the church sanctuary right now, come into the sanctuary and worship God. We could do it in our homes where we can worship God. And, and I, I think sometimes we, we forget that. We kind of go through the motions of worship. We go through the motions of church service. We go through, through that. I've been, I've been going to church my whole life, 49 years old. Been going to church my whole life. And, and one thing you you notice is you can kind of predict, okay, we're going to sing a song here, it's going to be fast, then we're going to go slow, they're going to do some announcements, the preacher's going to come up, afterwards we're going to greet one another, we're, you know, and you can kind of predict what's going to happen, and if we're not careful, you just, it becomes routine, and we forget the wonder and the weight of worship that we are in this place to worship God to seek God and, and to, to come into his presence. And, and there's, this, there's this passage in Exodus 19, and it's just this incredible passage. And I, I just want you to, I'm going to read it, but I want, you to get, I want you to get the scene here, the, the imagery of what is taking place. Is God, God has brought the people of Israel out of, out of slavery into this heading to the promised land, but the, the primary purpose, and we, you can see it in the calling of Moses, the primary purpose of what God wanted them to do when the Israelites came out of slavery was to worship him, to worship God. That was why he brought him out, to worship God. And, and he brings them to 
Mount Sinai and, and you get this image. Look at this image. It says, on the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightning and a thick cloud around the mountain and the, a very loud trumpet blast. And so the people of the camp, they, they trembled. And, and then Moses brought the people out of, to the camp to meet God. And they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord descended on fire. The smoke went up like a smoke of a kiln and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as a sound of a trumpet grew louder, and this is trumpets from heaven, the sounds of trumpets grew louder and louder. Moses spoke and God answered him and brought Moses up. So you get this, you get this picture, you get this image here. And now I want you to get this, this, there's this mountain and there's this smoke and there's trumpets and there's lightning and there's thunder. God is ascending on this mountain. God is ascending and he's, and he's inviting Moses up. And, and, but no one could touch the mountain. No one can come near. They trembled in fear at the presence of God. Now, now you fast forward past Jesus Christ comes and he, and he redeems us and he puts us in a right relationship with God where the writer of Hebrews says that we could come into the throne room of grace boldly and with confidence and we could, we could come and worship him and and the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 12, 18 now describes our worship and, and he describes it this way. He says, for you have not come to what may, what may be touched, a blazing fire and a darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further message be spoken to them. So he says, you have not come to this mountain like they did in Exodus where you couldn't touch the mountain where there was smoke and there was fire and there's all this fear that come up. He says, for they could not even endure the order that was given. Even if a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. It was so terrifying, it says, was the sight of Moses. He said, Moses said, I trembled with fear. But this is what the writer of Hebrews says, because of what Jesus Christ. But you have come to the Mount Zion in the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem in the and to innumerable angels in a festival gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God and the judge of all, the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks better word than the blood of Abel. So the, I want you to get this. This is so important, so, so important for us to understand. In the Old Testament, before Christ, there was God ascended on this mountain, trumpet smoke and only Moses come up but he was coming up with with fear and trembling no one could touch the mountain because of fear and and now through Jesus Christ we're not coming to that kind of mountain we're we are coming into the throne room of grace through Jesus Christ and we can worship him and and so we come to our psalm today psalm 95 and it speaks on worship and that's why I want us to this is what I want us to grasp is that we need to come to this understanding of the wonder and the privilege, really the privilege we have to worship God, to seek God, to come into his presence. And so what helps us to get to that is to remember who we are worshiping and to realize how we are to worship. And so that's what Psalms 95 says, and I'm going to read it for us. It says, Oh, come. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with a song of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are also his. The sea is his, for he made it. And the hands form the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our god and we are the people of his pasture the sheep of his hand today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts as at meribah on the day of massa in the wilderness when your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof though they may have seen my work for 40 years i loathe that generation said they are a people who go straight in their heart they have not known my ways therefore i swore my wrath they shall not enter my rest and so that's Psalm 95, and it speaks to who we are to worship, and it speaks to how, and how we are to worship. And so uh, first, to remember who we are to worship. It says that 
He is the Lord of all. He is the great God. He is the self-existent Lord of all. He is the great God. Twice in the, this verse, it talks about how great he is, that we come to God who is majestic, who is powerful, who is sovereign, who is the king, who is the Lord. He is the great Lord of all. He is great God. It says that he is the supreme king above all gods, that he is the capital K, not the little K, that he is the capital G, not the little G. He is the capital L, not the little L. He is the king of all kings. He is the Lord over all lords. I mean, listen, there are people in this life who have influence. There are people in this life who have power. There will always be people of influence and people of power, people in positions and authority and all those things. But they all submit and surrender to the king of all kings. They all surrender to him. Doesn't matter. I mean, we're going to come into this presidential election here of wondering who who to vote for. Uh, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Kanye West. It doesn't matter. Whoever, maybe you write in your, mount, your mom or Aunt Helga or whatever, you know, and you're wondering who's going to be an authority. They, the supreme authority, the sovereign king over all is God. And so we need to remember who we are worshiping. He is the creator of the universe. It says that his, in his hands are the depths of the earth. The mountains are his also, the sea, he has made it. Do you see, do you see the creator God in his hands are the depths of the earth. The mountains are his. The sea is his. Everything. You may think you own a piece of property. You may think you own money. You may think you own this or that. Yeah, you may own it according to a title or whatever, but he is the owner of it all. And that's why we give. We give up our offering. Not because we are like tipping God, but we give because he is the owner of all things. And we give to him. He is the owner of all. We worship the creator of the universe who holds the universe in his hand. That's who we are worshiping. Next, we worship him because he is the maker who sustains us. The very reason we we come into a sanctuary, the very reason we sing songs, the very reason we do these things is because he created it. He created our lungs. He gives us breath that we may sing. He gives us uh, a, a tongue, a mouth, a voice, vocal cords that we may worship. He gives us hands that we can lift up. He gives us uh, knees that we can bow down to. He is the creator of all, and he is the one who sustains us. It says that he's the shepherd who leads us. I talked about Psalm 23 a few weeks ago, that he leads us beside still waters. He, he, he provides for our needs. He prepares a table in, fr- in front of our enemies. He is a good shepherd uh, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. He, he is that good shepherd. He is watching over us. He is taking care of us. So the question is, is this that comes to my mind is if, if he's all these things, which he is, if he's all these things, if he is the cre- Lord of all, he's the king of all kings, he is the creator, he is the sustainer, he is the shepherd. Why would he want to do that? Why would he want to do that for us? Why would he want to have a relationship with you? And how could he do it? If he's so holy and righteous, how could he have a relationship with us? And the answer to that is back to verse 1, is that he is the rock who delivers us. He is the rock of our salvation. He is the one uh, that sustains us. Going back to the example in Exodus, no one could come to the mountain. No one could even touch the mountain out of fear of death. But in Hebrews, we do not have to fear. We could come boldly into the throne of grace. Why? Because of Jesus Christ, the rock of our salvation. We were lost in our sin. We were in the depravity of our sin. We were in the muck and the mire of our sin. And you know it if if you've received Christ in your life, where you were, where you were at in your life, where you were lost and how he redeemed you, how he saved you how he brought you out of the, uh, the miry clay and set, the writer of Psalm says, he set our feet on a solid rock. He put a new song of praise within our mouth. And so he's the rock of our salvation. And so this is God, and it's all through Jesus Christ. Look at these verses that says that who Jesus Christ is. Revelation 19, 16 talks about that he's the king, Lord of all. He says, on his robe is a on his thigh, he has a name written on it, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So he is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.16, for him, all things were created, the creator of heaven and earth, the maker of all things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, he's the ruler of over authorities. All things were created 
through him and for him. Colossians 1.17, and before all things and in him, he holds it all together. Jesus Christ holds it all together. John 10.11, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And so Jesus Christ is the one. Do you see it? Do you see it? It all points to Jesus. Jesus is our rock. He's our salvation. He is the one we are worshiping. He is the one we are worshiping. He, Jesus, is God. And we, we get to come. We get to come into his throne room. We get to come and worship. We get to come and bow down. We get to come and sing. It's a privilege. Do we get the weight? Do we get the wonder and the honor of what it means to worship God? That this should not be routine that this should not be going through the motions. This should not be, oh, I like that song or this song. This, this is worship to God. So that's who we are worshiping. We're worshiping God. Now, how do we do that? How do we worship? Verses 1, 2, and 6 says we sing. We sing. You know, it's a unique thing. No other place, I mean, you, you that you go in the whole congregation is singing not just one song but multiple songs it's a, it's a unique thing because what happens is his songs resonate with our spirit songs resonate with our soul it, you, you i i remember you know songs are songs that come up i i like listening to the 80s music because it resonates for a time that i grew up in 70s and 80s i love it and it it touches a part of your soul and and you, you recall a song of where you, were, you had that first dance with a girl. You recall that song when you broke up with that girl. You, you, songs have a, a tendency to minister to you and, and touch an emotional part of who you are, emotional part of, of your being. And so when we sing, it touches this emotional part where we are worshiping and singing and expressing, exp expressing emotion to God through singing and so there are songs that touch my heart in life i i think of old hymns and courses uh, some of my favorite um songs growing up oh for a thousand tongues to sing tis so sweet to trust in jesus it is well with my soul when we all get to heaven i'll fly away amazing grace nothing but the blood of jesus then there's other songs like courses how great is our God. How great is our God. What a beautiful name it is. I can only imagine the wonderful cross, the re revelation song. We, we sing that on Sunday. Sunday is too bad. You can't hear that one. I will praise him. Oh, man. Just these songs that when they come, there's something, there's something within your soul that gets you excited. You're like, yes, this is my expression of praise. This is my ex expression of worship. This is touching an emotional part of who i am and i am worshiping god next it says we shout to him it says um, that we make a joyful noise to the lord other translation says we shout joyfully to him i i think the the shouting is just not this chaotic shouting to god although that may happen but i think it's when when you're when you are singing and you get to that point in the song and you just your voice gets a little louder and you get a little excited and you just begin to shout out to God. You begin to, yes, I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, God, from the depths. Of you. You're just shouting out these praises to God. Uh, similar like in, in, in a sermon when you're listening to a message and you agree with the point of the message, you agree with the word of God and you shout amen, you shout hallelujah. Um, and I would encourage you to do that. Don't Don't worry about what other people may be saying just continue to do that and just say yes i agree with god's word there it speaks to my heart it says that we bow down before him verse six says that we we bow down we kneel before the lord uh, one thing that's nice about right now with our sanctuary is that we have space between prayers that we can kneel before god i think it's fully appropriate to come during worship to during songs to come to the altar and kneel before God. It's, it's, it's this act of humility and humbling ourselves before God. I, I would encourage you to do this even in your private prayer time, that when you read God's word and you spend time reading his word and praying, that you would take a moment and just turn and kneel at your bed or at a couch or chair, and you're just kneeling. It's something of, 
of changing our posture before the king. We come and we give him thanks and praise for who he is. It says, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us sing songs of praise. And so it's totally appropriate to thank God for who he is. I thank you, God, for saving me. I thank you for redeeming me. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my spouse. I thank you for education. I thank you for all these different things. Begin to thank God for all that he's done. Thank you that I could come and thank you. Thank you for all these different blessings. And I, I think it's totally appropriate every Sunday that we spend time thanking and praising God. And we, we lift, it says, make a joyful noise of praise to him. And then, so these are, these are specific things that we normally do. We sing, we, we bow, we shout, we give thanks, we give praise. But the, we also need to listen humbly to him. Verse 7 says, today if you hear my voice. I don't know how many times I've had people come to me, and it's not often, but it, throughout my ministerial career i've had people come to me and say man worship was so good we didn't even need the preaching like if the preaching is not part of the worship but preaching is part of it that we we listen the part of the reason in exodus um, or in 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 exodus where god was angry with them is that they didn't follow with what god said for them to do they heard but they didn't walk in obedience and so we need to hear worship is part of, we get to, we get to open up God's, God's word. We not only get to come to a place and worship God, we get to hear from God. It's a two-way street. We worship, we praise him, we, we exalt him, we lift up his name for he's worthy to be praised. But we also humbly say, God, would you speak? Give me ears to hear, oh God, what you're saying. God, would you speak to my soul? Prepare my heart. And we walk in obedience to it. The people didn't walk in obedience to God. They, and, he, and he turned and says, uh, they will not enter my rest. God, when God speaks, we must obey immediately. We need to walk in obedience to him and say, okay, Holy Spirit, what you're saying, let me walk in obedience. If you're, if you're not listening, it's one thing to listen, but if you're not walking in obedience, what, what's the point of even listening to what God says? So if whatever god is speaking into you would you walk in obedience to that and so to kind of recap on sunday we we had a time of just kind of closing this out with worship and we obviously we can't do that right now but i want you to think here today is the importance of of worship of who we are worshiping we're worshiping the great God, the great creator of heavens and earth, the king above all, the owner of the universe, owns all things, the maker who sustains us, the shepherd who guides us, the rock of our salvation. We are worshiping Jesus. And it's not just on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock or whenever you're watching this. We can worship him all the time. We get to worship God. And we do that through singing. We do that through shouting. We do that from through kneeling. We do that through humbly listening. We do that through um, praise and thanksgiving. Reading his word and I say, oh God, speak and let me walk in obedience. So I want to encourage you to have a lifestyle of worship. A lifestyle of recognizing the king on a daily basis a lifestyle of recognizing who God is on a daily basis, that you worship him, that you walk in according to what he has called you to do. God is moving. He is an amazing, awesome God. We put our faith, we put our trust, we put our hope in the sovereign king of, of this universe, and we worship him. Would you pray with me, Father? Thank you so much for the opportunity that we have, not only on Sundays, but every day, to worship you, to sing songs of praise, to reflect on your glory, to reflect on your goodness, to re reflect on your reverence in who you are. God, may we sing all the more. May we shout all the more. May we bow all the more. May we 
praise and give you thanks all the more. May we listen and walk in obedience all the more because you are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We look forward uh, to seeing you this coming Sunday. Hopefully we won't have technical difficulties. God bless you. Have a great week, everyone.